Welcome back guys. In the previous video, we discussed about uh, Clostridium tetani, its taxonomic position, morphology and the nutrient media. And in this video, we are going to continue. In this video, I am going to tell about virulent factors, ways of infection, type of tetanus and its profile axis. So, let us uh, discuss about the virulent factors. The main virulent factor is exotoxin. There are mainly two types of exotoxin, tetanolysin and tetanospasmin. Tetanolysin is otherwise known as hemolysin because it causes hemolysis or the destruction of blood cells. And the other one is the tetanospasmin. Before telling about the mechanism of tetanospasmin, we have to know how our muscle contract and how the nervous system control it. Whenever our muscle have to be contracted, our CNS or central nervous system will give an impulse to the muscle uh, telling to contract. And the, at a particular time, the contraction have to be stopped. And in order to stop the contraction of muscle, the neuroinhibitory neurons, okay, inhibitory neurons will produce the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA and glycine. And if we have tetanus, the tetanospasmin will block the secretion of GABA and glycine. If GABA and glycine is not secreted, then muscle contraction can't be stopped. So the muscle contraction will continue. If the muscle contraction is continuing, then the muscle becomes stiff and completely contracted and it is called as muscle spam. This is the main symptom of tetanus. So most of the symptom of tetanus is caused by the tetanospasmin. We can uh, tell that tetanospasmin which is a neurotoxin it is the villain of this disease so how this disease is caused or how human beings get this disease so ways of infection contamination of wounds by spore like if we have some wound and we are walking over some soil and all as these uh, organisms are anaerobes the spores are present in the soil this spores will enter uh, our body through the wound and it come deeper because it doesn't need oxygen it want a phase without oxygen so it comes deeper and it comes uh, in the muscle then in the neuromuscular junction we know that impulse come to the muscle but this uh, toxin will go back to the cns and reaches the inhibitory neuron and the blocks, ga blocks gaba and glycine secretion which causes the muscle spam so let us see uh, which are the cases will cause the disease like some pin pricks uh, skin abrasion sponge wound burns animal bite unsterile surgery and unsterile division of umbilical cord so let us have a look at these two points unsterile surgery and unsterile division we have to be concentrate on these points like in the rural areas and developing uh, countries uh, the delivery of boy or sorry delivery of baby and the um, abortion takes place in home only they won't go to hospital so in that case they use instruments which are unsterile mostly unsterile so there is a, a chance for those instruments to be contaminated with the spore if those spores are contaminated then the baby the infant or otherwise the woman can get tetanus so uh, we, let us see how, which are the types of tetanus Main, mainly there is three types of tetanus uh, generalized tetanus neonatal tetanus and post abortal tetanus generalized tetanus uh, means the symptoms are locked jaw uh, then difficulty in swallowing then the contraction of muscles of the back and uh, uh, muscles of all over the person okay like if the muscles of the back get contracted our body bends backward and it has a arc shaped and when this tetanus cause death whenever uh, this muscular muscular spasm interfere with our the respiratory or circulatory system then it can cause death and then other one is the neonatal tetanus and post abortal tetanus we already told and it is true that due to tetanus a lot of life we lost so many death happened but we have found so many vaccines against it so uh, let us see the profile axis uh, there are three types so active immunization passive immunization and surgical profile axis active immunization means uh, there are vaccines like uh, dpt vaccine and tt uh, tt is the retinoid stroxoid and dpt is the dip for the vaccine for diphtheria whooping cough and tetanus uh, in this vaccine we use stroxoids okay 
then the passive immunization uh, this we can tell us treatment also like we know all the symptoms of tetanus is caused by the tetanotoxin so uh, we can inject anti tetanotoxin okay that is passive immunization by active immunization our body will create a immunity which is long term okay and the surgical prophylaxis means whenever some wound or something happen we have to clean the wound very well we have to remove the necrotized tissues and the foreign objects from the wound very well and we know that this organisms are anaerobes they can't live in the presence of oxygen why because they doesn't have peroxidase enzyme if oxygen is present then they will produce hydrogen peroxide which is fatal so they can't live in the presence of oxygen so if some wound comes if a, there is a chance for tetanus we can clean the wound with the hydrogen peroxide okay then the treatment like passive immunization is only the treatment and under antibiotic treatment then diagnostic can be microscopic uh, then cultural and uh, serological okay fine thank you